Yes, you know sir. what time it is. It's nurch time. <laughs> so welcome, welcome, one and all. Come on in. Come on, lurch right into merch. <laughs> lurch. Lurch. lurch right into the <laughs> And get you some merch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on in and find your seat. Greet somebody in Reason's name. So happy. there's a lot going on. What, um, what, go ahead. what are you saying? Happy? Happy Sunday no, if you're watching this on a Sunday. And if you're catching this after the fact, then uh whatever day it is, we're glad that you're here. We're glad you're checking this out. You ready for uh Yeah, Sunday morning. Yes, sir. Al, how you feeling? So I was gonna say this di- I'm good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go ahead, Jay Whit. Talk. I, I was gonna say it's lot's been going on, right? Um you had a you you're you're running your book. It's it's like <laughs> It's like the Satan is trying to get in the way of the release of your audio book or something. <laughs> Man, I talked about it on the uh, on, on a post I put up the other day, but if I had known it was going to be this kind of work, I either would not have done it, uh, but I guess if I could have hindsight, I just would have done it right, which would have saved me all this uh, all this trauma and drama. But it's a labor of love, so hopefully when it's done, people will snatch it up and I'm even thinking about making it available for um, for people who are joining the Patreon. We have a Patreon now. If you join at the at the um, Ikapodians level, that's five dollars a month. If you join at the Ikafant level, at ten dollars a month, you might actually make it. So that <laughs> we, we give the uh, we give the audio book out to you or someone that you designate. You become a ten dollar a month giver. One of the perks for that tier, you'll get to send the audio book of "Let There Be Gaslight" to somebody that you you want to share it with, or you get it for yourself. Um, but it's a labor of love, and hopefully, it'll be done uh, soon. So, yeah. Well, for, for the time being, I guess your perseverance is producing character. Character is <laughs> producing hope, or whatever. It's, it's hope, producing hope won't disappoint you. It's producing right? curse words at this point. So we'll. <laughs> We'll see if curse words can turn into character. So. Yeah. Yeah, oh man. Isn't it interesting though how like the believer can parlay any kind of thing in their life to into something like as that's part of a grand universal scheme? You know what I mean? Like that is really well. You have the the skill of sorts, I guess. Right. It's not really a skill so much as it's the byproduct of having a book that was created to to do that mm. the book right. was created to explain or whatever. Yeah, the ideology why you're losing this and why you can't win that and why life sucks if you got a book full of explanations as to why it's not so bad or how it'll get good one day you're going to just have mm-hmm. a you've got a treasury full of ways to to put mm-hmm. some kind of uh, sunlight or silver lining around that cloud and it's, it's like it's like Paul and was it Romans eight twenty eight where he, he just finally just gives you the the ideology to end all ideologies. Yeah, I mean, basically at the end of the day, all things that come on here, <laughs> all things work together for the good. Yeah, <laughs> right. At the end of the day, that's the that's the grand. I don't know. That's the magnus opus of ideologies because you mm. can like all things. What doesn't fall under all things? Like yeah. you know, the one size fits all. Yeah. Of ideologies. All right, so yeah. uh, I'm thinking maybe I should go back and read a oh. few comments from last nurch, just to uh, give folks more time to get. Feels like it's been an eternity. Get their seats and. It has. It does feel that way. Greet your neighbors in in yeah. reason's name, as we like to say here. Let me go back to the last. So nurch. much has happened. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, Jr. We got to mention. We'd be remiss to to, to mention Jr. Oh, you know in that yeah, amazing so rather, interview. Yeah. Rather than go back to uh, well, hmm. I'm gonna go back to the last search. But yeah, we could read comments from the video we did with Jr. Mm. As well. Maybe I'll I'll do mm-hmm. one and one. Um. So my sister left a comment under the last nurch. Said uh, Shaw okay. Goodwin. Shaw Goodwin said I thoroughly enjoyed the points illustrated in this episode. 
Love Jaywood's point about the room of mirrors, which I feel can extend to many beliefs and the point about us condescending to the Bibles. <laughs> she wrote Bibles and then said no typo. Uh, content. <laughs> mm, well, yeah. Great, great stuff, man. Um, being, being a wordsmith runs in the family. Uh, Brady. Yeah. Oh, my, she used to be an MC too. She was a freestyler. Oh, awesome. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, David Devad like, said, literally runs in the family, I guess. Yeah. yeah. David Devad said, the paywall of circumcision. <laughs> hot, <laughs> hot damn. Mm. That's a bar. Um, yeah, that was a great line. Yeah. From Jay Whip. Yep. Uh, let me see. This is from Joe Bernard. 4708 said, another great one, guys. I was thinking before the show how the traditions of my fundamentalist Baptist upbringing would attribute my developing uh, skepticism, a development I can track as a supernatural act of God to confuse me and cause my mind to be under a delusion, claiming that I am hmm. unable well, you gotta, to... You got to read that one one more time, because... Yeah, I think this... Because I'm almost... Like he said, he said so much there, you know, like, like I just, I almost want to like, under, I want to fully understand where he's going, but I think I know, right? Yeah, let, let me see. I was thinking before the show how the traditions of my fundamentalist Baptist upbringing would, I'm not sure if this verb is, hmm. is the right verb he's looking for here. He says how that would uh, attribute my developing skepticism. So I don't know if that's the right verb he's looking for hmm. there. He's saying, he's saying a tribute is, is developing or how hmm. that would contribute to what my developing skepticism? Right, system? contribute, right, maybe. Maybe, yeah. maybe. That's uh, what I mean, contribute to his development. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, a development I can track as a supernatural act of God to confuse me and cause my mind to be under a delusion, hmm. claiming I am unable to reason while still being worthy of judgment for the conclusion of my confused mind that God caused to be confused. Wow. <laughs> Skepticism yeah, he's saying a lot here. Yeah. He's saying a lot. Skepticism easily knocks such a thought out of the park in reason's name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I think what he's saying there is there's all kinds of ways that the book has been crafted to make you second guess and doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't be skeptical of the book. Be skeptical of you, mm -hmm. right. yourself. Mm -hmm. But a healthy dose, mm -hmm. dose of skepticism will, will cause you to put the skepticism on the right object, not your mm -hmm. own mind. No, lean. You say on that your again, Bert. Ready? Yeah, not don't say be that again because that's a, that's a bar. Don't be skeptical. No, the of one thing you mind. said. What's that? You said put the skeptic. You said put the skepticism on the. I think you said the right on the right thing, object. Right? On the right object. The right there you go. That's that's you need to put that on a t-shirt because yeah, yeah. it's not that you're. It's not that you're not skeptical. It's that you're not putting yes. the skepticism in yes. the right place. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's a that's a bar right there. But it causes you to be mm -hmm. skeptical of yourself with all the leaning mm. out on your own understanding and taking mm. every thought that exalts mm. itself against the knowledge of Christ captive. So you're being trained and conditioned to always second guess yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that this is this is paralleling to the. I remember working with a conspiracy theorist who it's not that it's hmm, he, he reserved all of his skepticism for credible sources. <laughs> you know who what says I'm that? Who says that? Uh, uh, I think Professor Dave, Dave Farina, who who does the uh, he the says that videos, too. He says that kind of thing too. He yeah. talks about the way, like you know, you get flat earthers and you got all these people who are, and, and especially when it comes to people like. Terrence Howard and Billy Carson, they run mm -hmm. in circles that cause people to be skeptical of all the things that have produced everything that we had that we know is a is a byproduct of science and right thinking and yeah, beneficial like the internet. Right. <laughs> be skeptical of all that, but then be yeah. really trustworthy of all these people that you know have scammed their way to where they are and have all these criminal background <laughs> like it's, it's ridiculous it's ridiculous yeah yeah no it, it is true it's a guy who's made like literally nothing who's created nothing of value <laughs> to society he's made like a piece of artwork essentially that he's saying is math yeah. like trust that over the 
the science that gives us Boeing jets. <laughs> like, like, you know? Rocket ships. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that gives us vaccines. Like, trust yeah. that, like, you know, some guy with a tinfoil hat on over, like, you know, vaccines. It's crazy. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So putting um, that skepticism on the right object. Yeah. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to read any uh, um, comments from the JR video. I'm going to save those for exit strategy. Mm -hmm. Stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll dive in. Let's, uh, we're in Romans. We've been in Romans since the beginning of Nurch. And uh, I guess we'll, for the sake of those who are just joining this series, it'll be good to give a little bit of a recap. Uh, last time on Romans in chapter 14, we talked about Jesus, the Lord of the dead, where Paul just said some things that made all three of us, like Jesus had to <laughs> die. Why did he have to die? Oh, well, so that he could be Lord of both the living and the dead. <laughs> <laughs> we just we talked about just how uh, how illogical it is, but what Paul is doing is he's trying to give his his Christ's death significance, and so to do that, you mm -hmm. seize on whatever you can, as Jay would say. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking about death. Oh, Jesus died. Let me just tie those two together, <laughs> 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 and so. Now, Romans 14, oh, he's getting to the point where he's trying to help his, his Christian readers live together now. And I'm bringing Jew and Gentile together. I've got people who've got different cultures and different ethics. Some people think it's okay to eat meat sacrifice to idols. Some people think I, it's okay to observe this day. Or some say, no, I can't observe that day because I'm a Christian now. Paul is trying to get them to all live together in harmony with all their, now that he's created this world where Jews and Gentiles can live together. He's giving them leeway to kind of believe different things, but about very per peripheral things, about per very peripheral topics. Uh, as long as you're in Christ, just be in Christ, then you can have all these differences. And so we, we sort of looked at mm -hmm. the way Paul was trying to uh, lay the groundwork for unity, even though they have, you know, their liberty uh, to believe and practice different things. Um so go back and check out. I wish I, wish I had the team for that. Go ahead. I wish I had the Dave Chappelle like audio from uh, what's it when he does uh, Charlie Murphy's truth for unity. <laughs> so as soon as you said unity, you you never seen that clip? I don't remember. Okay, I'll let time. it go. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I had that audio. All right. Um, hmm. Man, uh, you you're reading the RSV, right? I am reading the RSV, and now that you said that, I got to remember, I need to pull this up on the screen for us here. Sorry about that. Uh, Al, I think I heard mm -hmm. you say only a few words this morning. I know you always join us from the West Coast, where it's three hours earlier. So, uh, mm. But as of right now, uh, anything that we've said or anything you want to add in before we dive in as I pull up the uh, the scriptures? Well, I think you summarized it really well. Uh I think uh, I'm trying to recollect because I, I feel like so much has happened since oh, then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, you know, I, I think uh, Paul seems to constantly remind the the reader that you know such idols and whatnot, whatever is deemed unholy or whatever is not real. But then you know he tries to accommodate mm -hmm. uh, anyway, mm -hmm. and he says that. Uh, he would rather he would not he would give up meat altogether yeah. you know if he if he were so he wouldn't have the other stumble yeah um i think yeah it's a very interesting <laughs> you know from our vantage point it's it's ridiculous but mm. I, but it's it's interesting how he tries to bring latitude in weird ways mm. uh to kind of yeah you know what it, it had to do with this idea that that he had to really market this to gentiles as as much as he could and you know I, grafting them in, into it you know he had to make these essentially latitude and sacrifices i guess you know what you're, you're making me want to so. say something that i really hadn't thought too much about i'm surprised we haven't said it in this entire time going through romans but what you just said al for some reason it it it, it put a thought in my mind you said he's trying to market this to, gen to Gentiles, and so he's mm. got to have this, this you know, wide berth of what you could actually practice in this, this what used to be a, a Jews only 
uh, book uh, yeah. religion. But hearing you say what you just said made me wonder, what do you guys think? If he hadn't ever marketed this to Gentiles, I wonder if there would be a Christian church today. I don't think so. Think about yeah. that. Yeah, I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah. Is what if fizzled legit? out is just another, you know, yeah, sectarian uh, Jewish, mess messianic Jewish uh, sect. Right. And, yeah. and, and your savior died. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I, something about something about the Jew Gentile terminology always bothered me, and I'm thinking about it right now. I've never articulated this, mm. <laughs> um, but the idea that you'd have a small group of people who say, "Okay, we're the the elect, mm. the Jew," for instance, yeah. in this case, and then every other people group, you mm. <laughs> like, which is massive. That's right. a massive category. Right. Every other people group. It's Gentile. Like they're all lumped together. They're basically all the, there's something yeah. reductionistic and, and, about and, that. And, and, and just... God loves us, not yo. Know, like how how convenient is that? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's very convenient that the God of the universe just, who created all just... these people loves your group. Yeah, it, it's it's it, it's offensively flattening mm. because when you think of who the Gentile are, you, like you're talking about people from Zimbabwe. Or you're talking about people from Korea. From Korea, yeah. they're all Gentiles. <laughs> like all of their cultures, all of their religious beliefs. There's just one term for all of them. It's like mm. there's something so offensively flattening about yeah. looking at the world that way, where it's like, okay, we will make a distinction for our group, mm. and then everybody else, no matter how like different they are from each other, they're just all the same. They're all Gentiles. Mm. <laughs> I just. There's something yeah. about it that is just very offensive. Uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Is. But okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, let's uh it's like you know, you know one last thought. <laughs> it's it reminds me of when you're do you're you've got like a sweet, like a dessert, a pie, literally, or something, and somebody who's sharing the thing with you is like, okay, what piece do you want? But they clearly know <laughs> you, they clearly want the bigger piece of the pie or whatever. And they're, but they're trying to pretend they want to share it with you and give you an option. That's what it feels like. It feels like they've taken, they've taken a huge piece of the pie and they've given you this little pie, this little piece of the pie for everybody else. Everybody else is a Gentile hmm. and we get this big. Now you got to care about our stories. You got to care, care about our myths. You hmm. and, I, mind you, this isn't anti-Semitic in the sense of I'm not talking about. Uh, it's not really even about Jews no, particularly. It's about this about way of believing. There's, right. You there's, know? There's, there's, a, there's a sociology and a psychology behind just this. I this a history that works this way. Like if for anyone, yeah, for any group to 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 think and say these things and posture themselves this way, it's a bit offensive. You know, it's it's. It, yeah, I, I hear you. Like having to make that disclaimer, I get why you make that disclaimer, but I get what you're saying about. Yeah, just think about that. Just think about. I don't it. want people to lose. Yeah, I don't want them to lose the nuance of what I'm saying. I'm saying any ideology that works out in a way where whatever your people group, because you know we got the humans, the the black nationalist group or whatever, you got them. They're doing the same thing. Any anything where it's like. Me is me and mine, and yeah. then the rest of the world is just like this very small category for everybody else. And it's that's not just me and mine. Like, it's not just me and mine. It's God is out for me and mine. The yeah, God of yeah, the whole yeah. universe. Very, very important distinction. The God of the whole universe is 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 behind me and mine, <laughs> not you and yours, not yep. us and yep. all me and mine. That's that's like that's the dead. Me and mine. Yeah. That's the dead giveaway. That something's wrong <laughs> here. Like, re like really? Yeah. That's what the God of the universe mm -hmm. is doing? Like, and we're going to dive into the chapter, but it's something to think about. Like, one of the things that, that relieved me in my deconversion was when I was finally able to say, so now I don't have to look at all these peoples around the world who've never heard this gospel presentation or never heard it in a convincing way or never heard it as many times as we get to hear it here. I don't have to look at all those people now and say, 
Well, I guess God just didn't give a fuck about them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You end yeah. up yeah. thinking that way yeah. when you have to rationalize, well, why is it that he, if this message is so important and this news is so good because the bad news is so bad, why would he trust word of mouth before airplanes, before ships even? Mm -hmm. Why would he trust word of mouth mm -hmm. to get the word out to the world if this message was so important? It's a dead giveaway mm -hmm. that something's wrong here. I, it makes me think of Albert. I know Albert. You about to say something? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead, Albert. Yeah, you were saying. Uh, it just made me think of your Korean Thanksgiving thing and the argument you said that Koreans had to have after they embrace Christianity, like you know, like the gospel. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly they feel like they gotta like, I gotta like get rid of an integral part of my my own culture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I gotta I can basically I gotta basically erase there's a certain amount of erasure that ends up happening. It's like I gotta embrace this other culture and their myths and I gotta take my own Korean culture and not only erase it, I gotta demonize it. I gotta mm -hmm. think that it's like somehow inherently like evil. Mm -hmm. And and, th and those things are, are those things are negotiated with, right? It's like not everyone agrees. Right to the level of at which yeah. they, you know, dis extinguish, you know, certain cultural practices. So then, you know, it just creates more. You know, why, why, why couldn't God be much more clear about mm. do's and don'ts about all this? Mm. And Paul only brings mm. the example of meat being eaten to idols, and that's it. I don't know. It's like it's just there's nothing. <laughs> it's you know, almost irrelevant now. <laughs> yeah, it's irrelevant. Well, you know, right? but but as a Christian, what you did was you. You took the specifics of meat sacrifice to idols or days mm -hmm. that you worship on, or I mean not worship, but days that you observe, and you you tried to derive a principle from that that you could use right. for right. Albert and you know, mm -hmm. okay, well, in principle, if this practice is not going to exalt itself against the knowledge of God, then maybe you still can practice it. But this goes back to what we said, uh Jay Witt at the end of JR's deconversion video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can you can. As a Christian, you can you can explore the world and you can maybe you could, you know, do these other things, but you have to do it in such a because you have to fit it into this Christian schematic, everything has to become so small. So Al, your Korean culture, yeah, you can observe it, but you've got to do it in such a small way because you've got to make it fit into, <laughs> yeah, you can study science and mm -hmm. you, you can accept microevolution, but not macro. You can you can you can, you can accept all those things. <laughs> Just make them all micro, not just evolution. <laughs> right. Everything so so right. micro, micro culture, the micro, micro yeah, micro yeah. machine. Like everything is so micro because it's got to fit into this small worldview. And your deconversion, what, what what me and Jay Witt said at the end of Jr's video was, no, now the world is yours. Now you can explore all that you can enjoy all that you can embrace all that you can investigate all mm. that you can follow the evidence wherever it leads and so now that we're coming to the end of romans romans was that prison for so many of us as christians this was the book you went to to figure out think about how romans one starts he starts with this wide view of the world and how people left god alone and suppressed the knowledge of god the truth for a lie and well, no, now we're leaving all that alone. And we're, we're re, <laughs> what did Jesus say? What does it profit a man to gain the world and, and lose his soul? Well, I'll tell you Very what it profits soul. him. Mm. It profits him the world. Like that's what it profits. <laughs> you you right. get the world. <laughs> right. You get the right. world. You right. actually get something. <laughs> right. No, you actually get, it's, it's like it loses soul, a non-existent entity. <laughs> it's like, no, actually, if you gain the world, you get the, the one thing in that equation that's real. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow yeah oh yeah. man okay so all that uh pre-roll we finally get to uh <laughs> romans 15 and uh i'm gonna share a screen and we'll dive in all right i'll read you guys i think i'll read the first uh pericope uh you don't call them paragraphs when you're reading the Bible. You call them pericopes. <laughs> yeah. I've gotten quite into that habit myself. Yeah. So uh, we'll read the first pericope to verse six, and then we'll, we'll try to go back through. <clears throat> me, 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 me. All right. 
we who are strong ought to bear the failings. Of, and, and so this, this comes on the heels of, of, as I'll recap, Paul is saying, hey, if, if I, you know, if me doing something that I have the right to do is going to cause my brother to stumble, I'm, I'm not, I'm just not going to do it no more. Um, so he's, he's continuing mm -hmm. with that, that theme here. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good to edify him. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached thee fell on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another. <laughs> well, we're going to have fun with this right here. Uh, such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice, univocality, <laughs> glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what say you, gentlemen? I'm going to let Albert lead. I'm still formulating my thoughts here. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, while you formulate, um, as we said, you know, he's, he's, he's um, imploring uh, them to, to work towards this unity. Um, not to please ourselves, let each of us please his neighbor for his good to edify mm. them. Well, I, I took, what is it, verse three? Yeah. Is that what you want to make the point? No, 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 just verse two, verse two. Um, now, granted, there is a sense in which doing things that are going to benefit your neighbor will make a better society in a sense. But one of the things I'm very thankful for having deconverted is being able to live for my own pleasure, not the pleasure of, um, think about the way you end up living your life as a Christian if you're always doing things for the good of your neighbor, not to please yourself. Verse one, he says, and not to please ourselves. But if you've gotta be in unity, you've gotta be in a, in a society or a community with people who, no, nah, I like to drink. Well, I think that's wrong. Okay, well, I'm not going to do it because I'm in this society with you. I'm in, I'm in this community with you. Like, if think about everything we just said. If you're trying to pull a principle from that that you can apply to a myriad of situations, that means you're always living your life trying to figure out, well, what is your conscience bothered by? Well, what is your conscience bothered by? Well, what is your conscience? Okay, now that I know what all your consciences are bothered by, I'm not going to live to please myself. I'm going to live to please you all. That is such a stressful way to live in a community as opposed to finding out, no, who do I have things in common with? Okay, well then let me mm -hmm. let me rock with y'all. What do y'all like doing? Okay. I just I, go ahead. Immediately when you started talking about living um, you know, to please yourself, I thought of the verse from from 2 Timothy where he says, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Mm. Um He's fucking describing worldly people. And so I just, I think as a Christian, I remember memorizing that verse and thinking that it was inherently, this is incidentally why a lot of people had a problem with Piper. Because Piper. In, in 2 Timothy, yeah, John Piper, because in 2 Timothy, Paul basically bifurcates it. He says like, these people are lovers of pleasure mm. rather than on the other side of that blade is lovers of God. And, and John so, Piper was a... It, Christian hedonist basically yes. trying to find ways to to you try to collapse the two into each yeah. other. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so some people think that there's an inherent problem with Christian hedonism in that it makes um pleasure paramount. It, it, you know, Piper is just saying that the was it the locus of it of your pleasure should be in in, in God himself. Yeah. So he tries to make it, you know, he tries to synthesize hedonism with uh, a certain kind of, I don't know, he's almost trying to monasticism. Not just, not just synthesize it there, but he's trying to sanctify 
pleasure mm -hmm. in a way that Paul Paul doesn't seem to be giving you that. Yeah, I mean, he, he contrasts loving pleasure with loving God. That's a contrast, not a mm. synthesis, you know? So um, anyway, that's a bit of an excursus. I was just saying when you, yeah. I just, I know there is the Christian like me from back in the day, I would have heard you saying, think about how freeing it was to just know I could do things for my pleasure. I'd be like, yep, see, that's where you, that's where you done went wrong. <laughs> Two Timothy describes an individual like you as a lover of pleasure. But here's Come on what, here, here's rather what, than a lover of God. Here's where this is taking me. Al, you cut me off the second you want to, want to dive sure. in here, but yeah, what it's making me think about is this is what makes the Christian community feel so false. Because everybody is there for the love of God and the love of Christ and trying to enjoy him and, and relish the, you know, all that. But you're also beating back your own passions, your own desires, you're denying yourself, you're dying to yourself, you're, you're doing what's going to please the other person and not yourself and all that. That's, that's a false way to be. Which mm. might explain why his prayer in verse five to this day, 2,000 years later, has not come to pass, which we'll get there as we go down. But <laughs> if you're living in, in a way where you're beating down your own desires so much, you're not really being you. And so that's why I say it's freeing to, to flee from Christ because you're, you're able to actually be who you are and love what you love. But I digress. I think uh, one thing I, that I have to add, I think, something that I realized not too long ago, but this idea that, um, you know, the, the pleasing God aspect of like the bifurcation or the, or the, even you would, you would say, you know, to critique Paul or to critique the, like you, like, we know, you know, the Bible isn't univocal, but apart from that, you can stand back and say that, why the, why why does there have to be this dichotomy between pleasing mm. God versus pleasing yourself in the first place? Mm. But the mm. the actual uh, principle, or I guess the idea that flows from that for me is that I think I I still kind of have to work at deprogramming mm. when I when I do like a good deed or when I do something out of empathy or mm -hmm. sympathy or generosity uh or even just like just like you know when, when you greet somebody you know it's like I, mm -hmm. I i built this weird mechanism on my head that um that it it, it you have to do it the right way mm. it, mentally like it, it has to flow from some object of faith type you know is it coming from the motive of pleasing god or you know things like that and that's that's a really hard programming that you build in you right and then to like move away mm. from that because like mm. sometimes i'll like feel a little guilty for doing something nice mm. <laughs> you know mm. what i mean it's like it's mm. like why it's like, that's like so twisted you know wow and like it's, it's so programmed into you i know also. right and then the thing is like i think there's something you know I, I just recently you know i i had a confrontation with somebody at work and uh it was something that I, that I, it took me like two weeks to conjure up enough, uh, I guess, like like just knowing to, to approach it the right way, and and meaning like I didn't want to 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 do it in a way where I, I was gonna like feel some relish and like you know mm. maybe talking them down or something like that, but then I realized like I had to do it for myself first first and foremost in a way that was like generous and understanding and try to kind of mend the relationship a little bit right the working relationship and guess what it went well and afterwards i felt great and mm. it's like doesn't doesn't have to be this like conflict between what feels good and what's good for wow. others you wow. know that, that, that that's you know that's kind <laughs> of the thought that i had <laughs> Uh, there's a there's a mm -hmm. post that I'm trying to send to myself now so I can put it on the screen. As I uh, as I peruse Facebook, sometimes I see Christians posting things. It really makes me glad that I'm no longer there because you see just how twisted up 
yeah. it become. Yeah, but you, I mean, you're you're basically saying, Albert, that good that old habits die hard when it comes yeah. to Christianity. Even yeah. you've been out of faith for the better part of a decade at least. And longer. Yeah. You're yeah, longer than a decade, and you're still finding yourself having to beat back. Was it Paul talks about beating into submission? Right. the old man right like mm. you're finding the old man is still there like mm. the, the, we talked about i think in that body of body death, of death. Episode, yep. <laughs> exactly mm-hmm. <laughs> like you're, you're still working on yourself and trying to get rid of it's weird like in a sense before you became a christian you may have been free to go your your life without having to carry around this other personality mm. like the irony is that christianity is the is the thing that gave you the that sort complex. of duality, we complex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the complex. Prior to that, you you may have had the, the the experience of living your life without the angel on the one shoulder and the devil. On the other. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Like <laughs> well, you could have maybe gone through your life just only. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Greg. Well, I was gonna say, like, what you what you what you're talking about here is here's what we're what, what we're doing in this. What is the project of deconversion and deconstruction? You're really saving yourself from salvation. Like what's mm-hmm. what the what the salvation project did to you, you're going to spend the mm-hmm. rest of your life rescuing yourself from that. See, that, that's another t-shirt, man. Yeah. It's like it's almost like when they talk about the alcoholic. Um, I remember a relative of mine having real problems with the way. Like was it Al-Anon or um, like some of these ex-alcoholic groups and stuff? They would say you're a lifelong alcoholic, even after you've even after you've been clean, mm-hmm. you haven't gotten drunk, you haven't had a drink for ten years. They'll say, "Yeah, I'm a recovering alcoholic," and it's that's kind of what you're tapping into, Brady. You're saying like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, you left the faith twelve, thirteen years ago." But you're still a recovering believer. Yeah. Oh, oh, recovering Christians. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good mm-hmm. line. I really mm-hmm. like that. And and to that yeah. to that point, uh, Tim Mills um, has a great video that he just posted today on his channel, Harmon- Har- Harmonic Atheist. But he um, on Facebook mm-hmm. he had a big uh, picture that said five years sober, and the caption on top was mm. I escaped Christianity five years ago. Nice. So he, he was asking people to come wow. help him yeah, celebrate yeah. his sobriety from Christianity. Amazing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I saw this on Facebook. A Christian posted this. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Like this is wow. the kind of life the kind of <laughs> oh. knots you twist yourself in. Yeah. Like what the Bro, hell? He's got the gold. He's got the gold. That's the logo for the remember that Ichapod's initial name was gonna call it the goats. <laughs> he's got the right logo. <laughs> he's got the, the goats. But I mean seal the seal. No, this is nuts. Think this about is nuts, that. Man. This is a mind fuck. This is literally mm. a mind fuck. And people don't <laughs> yeah. Are, yeah. they're not aware. <laughs> Put yourself back in your Christian mind. Could you make sense of this as a Christian? No, they, they've taken on Paul's reasoning style. Yeah. You know, the stuff the we deep deep. it's like, the you, you, may, you spend, yeah, you, you spend too much time with Paul, man. You, you're talking like him. Father, help us repent <laughs> of our mistakes. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> What? Oh, for anybody what who's, are you talking about, bro? who's listening and not able to see your screen because you're working out or driving or whatever, this screenshot is a, a Christian's post on Facebook, and the post says, Father, talking to God, help us repent of our repentance with two exclamation points, and then hashtag, I am a wretch, and then another hashtag, Hell King Jesus over the background and, of some, and some hearts. Arbitrary hearts. Maybe arbitrary that's the way of telling you to like it. <laughs> Be sure to like, subscribe, <laughs> and share. <laughs> I mean, like, the, you know, uh, people have convinced themselves that this eases their conscience when they think this way, hmm. right? And, and then it's like, imagine in their heads, they're 
it's like you have God looking at you and then he, he sees you do this and he's like, oh yeah, good job. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's exactly right. And it's like, yeah, even just, your righteousness is filthy rags. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All your righteousness is filthy rags. So it's like the, the, it's like the, it, it it's literally like, it's literally like you're, 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 you're my bitch. Like that's, that's mm. the kind of relationship that you yeah. have with, with this idea of a God. This is mm. just crazy. Yeah. No, no, but think to... about the idea of repenting of your repentance. That's an infinite regress in reality. That's well, a real life because it's like, am I repenting? Let me repent. Am I repenting? Let me repent of that. It, be, <laughs> like, it never stops. When no you said that, I, was, I didn't go as far as you went with it. I went just the, the first step or the second step of I'm trying to picture myself as a Christian. First of all, repenting of something and then getting up from my knees and saying, no, and then going back to my knees to repent of the repentance that I just right. repented. Like, what? But then yeah. you have to repent of that, though. But <laughs> yeah, then you got to keep it going. <laughs> because at, at some point, you're never, like, you're on your knees. I, I don't think I ever heard, well, did you hear that when you were a Christian? This is the last thought on that. Did you ever, I guess, I guess I recall being in prayers with people where they would, they would get down so low and, and humbled that they'd be like, Father, all of our righteousness is, you know, guilt is filthy rags. And Father, even in our even in our righteous acts, our preaching and yeah. our prayer, we're we're just so utterly dejected and sinful. I Father, just I, purge us. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I Ray. mentioned this, now I mentioned this on this podcast before. I remember, I think it was either Chuck mm -hmm. Swindoll or Charles Stanley. I think it was maybe Swindoll back in the day, who said, and this almost parallels exactly what al said but he said mm -hmm. i have i have to repent of every good deed i do and yeah, his, his yeah, explanation please. was because in those in those good deeds there's there's self-seeking there's pride there's you know whatever so even my good deeds is like i gotta repent but that's still that's still miles away from having to repent of my repentance like that's another level <laughs> yeah. here's here's, here's yeah. a weird thing I, I i brought the illustration of of having a conversation with my coworker to kind of you know mm -hmm. telling him i have concerns about our working relationship and here's the thing like, i had so much anger over mm -hmm. you know the the two events that that he just kind of you know was was an a-hole he was kind of being an a-hole and i got so upset i was upset for like two weeks and guess what it's like when I chose to embrace kind of being understanding, but also letting him know like, yo, this is not cool. Mm. I want us mm. to work better together. Guess what? The anger evaporated after mm. I had that conversation with him. And I did it mm. selfishly. I did it for my own sake, mm. for his sake too, but it was primarily my own. And it's like, how can you say that's a bad thing? I mean, right. You know, I, I just I, I, so Chuck Swindoll and all that, you know, like rhetoric and all that. It, it's 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 vapid. It's not. It's like trying to over complexify, mm. thinking that you're saying something profound by by doing it. It's, I just had a, I, yeah. I just had a thought when you were saying that that they they get super nuanced in their analysis of themselves. When I say they, I'm talking Christians. But it, when you deconvert, they're super reductionistic. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's me pitting so first the, yeah. so they all have this like complex matrix of on their own motivation mm -hmm. they'll be like oh even in my right. most righteous deed oh my gosh there's still some it, but if you tell them you need convert oh it was just because he wanted to sin <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like all of the subtlety so goes right out of the door it's yeah, like yeah. you have this ability to think in such a nuanced way about your righteousness but if i say i don't think i believe in you okay you just, what, what's the secret are you gay <laughs> what's the secret say <laughs> excellent it's so excellent. true man all right come on let's let's go because we, we got a lot to get through here yeah good stuff bro. Um, <laughs> and that's just off of uh let us not please ourselves <laughs> verse verse two let us let each of us please his neighbor for his good to edify him verse three and and this is why you should not please yourself, but please others. For Christ did not please himself, 
But as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached mm. thee fell on me. I have an issue with this yeah. now as an unbeliever. What difference does it make that because Christ didn't mm. please himself, I shouldn't please myself? Like, mm. why is that a good enough reason for me to not please myself? Well, you're trying to be Christ-like, I guess, right? But for if what? You're a Christian, technically. But why do I need to be Christ? Like, what benefit is it to me to know that he did this and now I, I need to do this? Like, what do I get out of it? You that? mean as an unbeliever or as a believer? You're well, saying even as a believer? I'm saying as a believer, I used to think that there was some inherent value in doing it because Christ did it. And now I'm wondering... What really was the inherent value in that? I get to please my father in heaven? Okay, then what? Well, I mean, in, for Christians, just like for Muslims, Muhammad is the ultimate human. For Christians, Christ is the ultimate human. So it's like... Yeah, okay, I get I that. remember one book... No, I get that. I get to emulate the ultimate, but what do I get out of that? You get to be sort of the ultimate version of you that you could be. <laughs> but right? the ultimate version of me is not doing yes. things for me? Yeah, that's like, what they would about, say. The ultimate you about, is being, how convoluted yeah, that is. Godliness. The ultimate, yeah. but but no, but but look, God is doing all this shit that's ever happened since the beginning for his own glory and pleasure. So how is it mm -hmm. ungodly to do something for my pleasure? <laughs> if I'm going to be like God, shouldn't I be doing things for my pleasure, for the praise of my glory? Like, what do I get? Well, out of well Piper like would say, Piper would say, yeah, your if your pleasure is centered in God, then yeah, that's that's when it comes to like its ultimate expression because because your will, not my will, but thy will, then suddenly your will, the more your will is like his will, then you can fulfill yourself while fulfilling and I, his will. But but in that is I'm going to get a certain amount of pleasure out of pleasing. God. This is this is a weird thought. And I, I don't want I don't want to get too graphic here. Yeah. All I'm saying is this idea of doing it because Christ did it or doing it for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But embedded in this, you're telling me not to please myself. You're telling me that I'm not going to get anything out of this. Other people will. Like, you you sort of have to be admitting that your pleasure in all this has got to be in pleasing someone else. That's what you, mm -hmm. you've got to find pleasure in pleasing others because there's nothing pleasurable about this in you denying yourself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes and there, there is some pleasure in that but go ahead Al. yeah no you're, you're making me think here because I, I don't know this could be kind of convoluted but I, I think that because I, I think often when you know let's step away from the analogy but just just think about it in <laughs> purely purely in terms of of when you are looking out for someone you care about mm. uh, whether they're kind of you know, it could they they could be going through a rough time, suffering, or they could be mm. uh, just trying to overcome something, right? You know, that kind of thing. And then you 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 sometimes would put yourself in a situation where you just want them to succeed or you want them to be well. Uh, I don't see how that applies. Like like that to me, that is, I think, the, a great function of human empathy mm. and. Uh, in, in, in you know i think pleasure in, in multiple levels right and you know that's the thing it's like so uh in a sense like we don't have a way to latch that onto god at all like mm. it's just not it's like a, it's so it's just like a fucking idea this is like not there's no like i don't see how that so therefore because that in a sense you can't relate to that like they try to use jesus in some ways to do that and then it becomes like this weird like mm meta thing that you have to do with your head and then it's like you know i i don't know if this has any merit what i'm saying but i'm just no no yeah. you're summing up the the idea of what, I, what i'm trying to get at here is yeah what is it about 
having this Christ figure that you can always throw out as, well, he did it. This thing that I want you to do, he did it. So now you have to do it too. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah, you're right. It's like, <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Well, and I guess it does help to, if you've got this prototypical human being, this God man who never sinned and he mm. always did the right thing. And once again, I'm I'm going to, to, to put this at the, you know, the pinnacle of living in this context is mm -hmm. pleasing God. So if he did what pleased yeah. God, he did not please himself, but he did what was going to please God and benefit mm -hmm. his neighbors. That should be the goal that all of us live for. It does like who would not want that kind of a neighbor? The neighbor who's never pleasing themselves, but always pleasing those around them. So if you, if you get a community of people to do this, somebody's going to benefit from having people around them who are not always pleasing themselves. Yeah, but what if you want your neighbor to please themselves? Does that become like the catch-22 thing? Like, what if he's trying to please you and you're like, no, I, I really want you to have a good time, man. Like, just, like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's like when you're trying to go out to eat with somebody weird... and you're like, you're like, hey, where, yeah. where do you want to go to eat? Or where do you want to go to eat? No, I want you to have, no, I want you to have, like, no, like, please yourself. Like, it, you're right. It, it does become a, yeah. <laughs> so weird. All right. We should probably spend way too much time on, on that verse. But... <laughs> it, was, it was fun, though. Was but fun. this is this is an important verse here that gets all kind of mileage. He quotes this verse from Psalms. Yes. Uh, I think it's Psalm 89, where um, the reproach of them, those who reproach thee fell on me. Um, where the psalmist is talking about someone who's being um, injured for the sake of others or who's catching a bad rap or bad name for the sake of others. And uh, Paul says, for whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction that by steadfastness and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. And this sort of, you know, we talk, you think about um, rabbinic midrash where they're taking all these passages from the Old Testament or from the Hebrew Bible and finding whatever kind of meaning they need taking mm -hmm. all kinds of things out of context and making it mean whatever they needed to mean for their current day. Mm -hmm. Paul sort of lays out the blueprint for why and how they could do that for whatever was written mm -hmm. in the past. This sort of gets spiritualized, but I don't know, maybe he is. I don't know if he's spiritualizing this as much as he's just saying, here's how we use those scriptures. Whatever was written in the past, we use them for encouragement for ourselves today. You could say that that's a Holy Spirit thing here. This is what um, Greg Bill, my, my um, hermeneutics professor in, in seminary, was trying to tell us, here's why the New Testament authors could use the Old Testament the way that they did. The Holy Spirit allowed them to take whatever they found in the Old Testament and find some Christ-centered. But no, I don't know if Paul is saying that. Paul is saying, this is how the rabbis use those scriptures. Yeah. Whatever was written, we use them for our encouragement today, which sort of tells you that their hermeneutic was nowhere near mm. as, as clean. And, you know, you, you talk about the historical, grammatical, uh, rhetorical approach to the scripture. No, whatever was written in the past, we had, it's almost a like car blanche. We have the ability to take whatever was written and make it mean whatever we need it to mean. That was how he was getting down. Well, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I think, I think you broke that one down pretty clearly. I would love to hear a Christian come and are, make an argument that Paul's not doing that, that Paul is laying out some Holy Spirit based prophetic, you know, blueprint as opposed to no this is how rabbis use the text <laughs> right That's, you know what i mean mm -hmm. i mean i i don't when he says uh that we might have hope mm -hmm. uh that's like a non set I don't even know what that means, what the connection is there. That's another that's another like you know good therefore point. that we can't connect. Yeah. Know? Good point. So it's also a straightforward 
he's showing his cards. He's like, yeah. yo, he's letting you know this is an ideology. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. He's like, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like, bro, you you you're not supposed to show them how you're doing the trick, Paul. <laughs> right. Stay <laughs> together with me. Right. You right. know, like now that you told us that, that that's what you're doing here, how can I actually trust you? Mm. You know? Yeah. We anyway. can hope from whatever was written in the past, which begs the question. Is it limited to just the Hebrew Bible? Can we get hope from anything that was written in the past? Mm -hmm. Because if you go back to the Hebrew Bible, you realize, well, damn, they were getting their hope from all kinds of sources. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why is no, that just of, the Bible? I think of, of preachers, and I remember when I was in church and when some of the Reformed preachers would really hate on pastors who would respond to things that were in the news. Like, it would be like Kendrick and Naomi from the Bible, or something like, like they, they, like they would weave in the Kendrick beef or something in the uh, Jacob and Esau or whatever. You know, they would try to make it relevant to the, and I remember reform people, some, some of them hated on it. And now that I'm, this is just a quick comment. Now that I'm seeing how ideology full the Bible is, it kind of makes sense actually to do that, I guess, basically, mm -hmm. like to, to try to find ways to make it relevant to whatever is going on. Cause that's what you see people in the text. Anyway, I, I don't know. It's just a, yeah. just a yeah. thought. Yeah, like yeah. You see it happening in the text all the time. I'm trying to like mm -hmm. make a bizarre passage that has nothing to do with what he's talking about relevant to his, his yeah. topic, you know? Well, it's weird because Bible uh, Bible professors, hermeneutic professors, pastors, theologians. You have this idea of, you know, in scripture, study to show yourself approved, a workman rightly dividing. The word of truth. The word of truth, cutting it straight. That's what's that, Ephesians 3, 6, 16, uh, 3, 16? You know better than me. Some, some, some literal translations might say, cut it straight. That's the rightly mm -hmm. dividing. Kind of, it's, it's, a, it's a term that they would use. But when you look at the way that they that Paul and, and the writers of the gospel look at the way that they use the Old Testament, they were not rightly dividing anything. Mm. So it's like, you want to hold us to some very strict, oh, you can't make it mean this, you can't make it say that. All these liberal theologians, all these, you know, um, uh, liberation huh. theology. Timothy 2.15. Right. Uh, you, you try to make people that's, use that's the Bible. <laughs> okay. You try to make the people use the Bible a certain way. But you look at the way that the New Testament authors use the Hebrew scriptures and they were not doing anything like that. They've got all kinds of coloring outside the lines that they did to make it look mm. like it looks. So it's a double mm. standard. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. All right, we got to move here. Yeah, Paul really flies. Yeah, he flies with these, like, but in the seven, in that, that second pericope where he starts going, he's all over the place with it. It's almost like, Sometimes it feels like if he finds a word that is used in a passage that's similar to a word he's using, he's just like, all right, that's a pro you, you, you know what I mean, Al? Hold like, on. did you notice that? It seems hold like- on, Hold on, before, hmm? before you go to verse seven, I just want to make a real quick note. I said it a minute ago, but I just think it's worth saying again, see if you guys have any comment on verses five and six. He prays here. The apostle mm -hmm. of all apostles prays a prayer. We should do an episode- mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I got, it will take some time to do all the prayers of Jesus that have not come to fruition and the prayers of Paul. These are the most, yeah. you would think these are the most highly effectual praying people. It's a great idea. Paul <laughs> prays, may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice, think about all the, like, how how funny all you have to do is say it's 2020 to that. <laughs> like, <laughs> how dramatically, how fantastically, how spectacularly has this prayer failed? I mean, it, it, I it's, so it, it, it's so funny because he, he writes this passage and then all of a sudden he writes angry letters to uh the <laughs> Corinthian church. <laughs> Yeah. In in, yeah. in, Gal in the Galatians. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You foolish uh, Galatians. Uh, yeah. Who's re re rebuking you? rebuking Peter uh, for dividing the church? Mm. <laughs> mm. 
it's it's hilarious. It's, it's, yeah, it's J- good. JR really pointed it out. I I think he said it so poignantly in mm-hmm. his coming out video of saying he's no longer a believer, and he was just mm-hmm. like. He thought, he, I think at one point he said something like, I thought we were worshiping the same God. Mm, like, right? Yeah. Something along those lines. Like, when he was talking about this really kind of racially charged yeah. period during 2020, he was like, wow. Up until then, he was oblivious to the fact that these attitudes existed in the church, you know? Mm. Yeah. All right, you were saying about verse 7, it's the, the, the next perfect P there. What word are you seizing on when you say he gets a hold of an idea or word and and starts going uh, left with it? I'm, I'm just, it's, it's not only just word. It, it might be a concept. Like when he says uh, here, it's Gentiles. He says like, he sees that and uh, he sees that in these other passages, and then he just pulls out this whole. Oh well, let me. Well, let me I mean, let you me know, read Paul it. Let me is read it. very. Let me read it. We haven't read it yet. Mm-hmm. Welcome one another, therefore, as Christ. Well, uh, has welcomed you, once again, going off the whole, hey, Christ did it, uh, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of mm-hmm. God. For mm-hmm. I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, therefore I will praise your name among the Gentiles and sing to thy name. And again, it is said, rejoice, O Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all Gentiles, and let the peoples praise him. As further Isaiah says, for the root of Jesse shall come and uh, shall come. He who sees, I'm sorry, he who ri- he who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. You know, there, it almost seems like there's somewhat of a contradiction here in the way he talks about Abraham being the father of all those who believe. Because if he's the father of all those who believe, and we're there for all, like, you know, how they say later, he's with Jews, one inwardly. Why are you still speaking in these, like, in this kind of terminology where you're separating Jew and Jew? Because, like, technically, aren't they supposed to all, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Or is what I'm saying making sense? Like, if they're all one, why are we still making the distinct? Anyway, that's a whole other. I'll let that go. It, well, it just it's, strikes it's, me it's, odd. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it could be part of the marketing, right? In, in a sense, right? It, that's the only reason why that that dichotomy exists, you know, or, mm-hmm. the, or that separation. You know, I, I mean, hmm. you, I, you, you're logically correct that you know, Jay Wood. Like, I, I think that's right logically, but. He has to. This this is his if, marketing. If, if Abraham's descendants are going to be more numerous than the stars in the sky, and they're saying that that's fulfilled because of Gentiles becoming, that means Gentiles are the descendants of Abraham. Okay, if they're the descendants of Abraham, then they're technically, I guess, Jews too. So hmm. why, again, why are you now like contra, contra, you know, contrasting Jews and Gentiles when you're saying this is being fulfilled? Well, maybe because he's introducing something new. He's he's stating the obvious that we definitely do have Gentiles in our mix, but that's not a problem because, as we talked about in verses uh, ten and eleven, it was always God's plan to use the Gentiles to chastise Israel, but at some point make the Gentiles believers too. So maybe he's just, you know, naming the elephant in the room that even though I am talking to you all about oneness, I know I've got two groups mm-hmm. of people in front of me. But here's why that too doesn't necessarily have to concern themselves with that two-ness because the Gentiles were always supposed to That's a binary out. way of looking at the world, Jew yeah. and Gentile. I yeah. really so, I'm starting to hate this. Mm-hmm. I really hate that, that idea. Because not only is it binary and reductionistic, but it places too much importance on any given one ethnic group when you have a world full of all these different ethnic ethnicities, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like all of the other ethnicities are just Gentile. Just think of how yeah. like ass backwards that is to think of a category that includes most people and to be reductive in general with that category. It's terrible. And because- very specific with well, I was going to say, it's terrible because it programs us. 
I think about the way it's programmed me. Like, mm -hmm. how people blind have I been? Because I saw the mm -hmm. world as Jew and Gentile. Mm -hmm. Like, even as an unbeliever, like, think of right now we have a war going on in the Middle East. Israel and is now, you know, has, has a ground incursion into Lebanon. And even as an unbeliever now, I, I still get very easily tripped up in thinking about the world as Jew and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it, it makes you people blind. You don't see the myriads of tribes on the continent of Africa. You don't see the distinction in Asia. You don't see even in Europe, you don't know it's, it's Jew and non-Jew. Yeah, right. they're, they're all Gentiles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, it's crazy. so backwards. That's crazy. It's yo. such a backwards way of thinking of the world to have any people. Just so let's see, it's any of you haters start <laughs> start thinking this is anti-Semitism here. I'm saying no one ethnicity, mm. none should exist on a planet that thinks that they are pri like prioritized over all the people groups. And this goes for any group of people like that's to take any to, to be like a black American and be like foundational black Americans is all that's important in the world. Mm -hmm. And everybody else is just another category. Like oh they're just God. other people. Foundational oh black God. Americans matter. That's so backwards. You can't. That's that's not a real it's, it's not only backwards. It's not a realistic view of the world, because however important you think foundational black Americans are. They are a very small percentage of the world's population and can cannot and necessarily are not the most important thing. The, what, the most important thing is how to get all of these people groups to be har live in harm. But you can't do that if you flatten them out and reduce them to just like, yeah, where you're collapsing somebody who's from uh, Guinea into someone who's from Korea. Like if your category is that, Reductive, it's probably a really bad way of looking at the world. I think about how many times I've said this to people when I was presenting the gospel. I said this, that from God's perspective, he sees the world as divided into two people groups, his people and everybody else. Like I've said that so many times to people, yo. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not until right now that I'm actually thinking about how damaging and damning that actually is. So true. I I, I think that a lot of the times it, mm. it's it's used as an excuse to almost. I, I feel like it's a card they carry to show that they're maybe like they're not racist at all or something or not like you know because mm. all they care about is like whether you're regenerate or not or whether you're in the you say that you're talking about believers believers yeah yeah so so i so i think it kind of creates this weird yeah, that's like a good you, point you, yeah you're right yeah you, you you've just taken you just you found an excuse to ignore all those other divisions or mm -hmm. you, or the uniqueness and the diversity of everything else by claiming that it, but by introducing another <laughs> yeah. yeah binary choice yeah, yeah 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 rather than making it about oh white versus black or yeah. no 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 it's god's people versus exactly the rest of the world exactly it's so not you, it, yeah. it's not insightful at all anymore yeah. it, you like, solve the problem of all these other divisions right. by creating a different division <laughs> exactly <laughs> yes yeah. yeah. no better yet You've made you've made a more simple division because mm. mm. you have all those other divisions, which is actually closer to the way the world really is. It's com more complex than necessarily. Yeah, yeah. And what you've done is you've made a very reductionistic and simple division of but, humanity. But isn't that what etiology does? Mm. I don't have to give you the mm. nuanced, complex description, right? Because I may not even know why there are different ethnicities. So if I make up a mm -hmm. reason. Yeah, it's going to sound crazy in light of science and in light of, you know, further uh, human discovery. But in an ancient world, that division of, hey, these are God's people and everybody else is not. That simple explanation, that works. Yeah. Now you got to, yeah. to the person. This, this is how, this. I was going to say, this is all of the stories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Adam and Eve, right? Yep. Evolution. Like to actually have to try to grasp with your mind's eye the nature of evolution and how humans actually did end up here. Mm. It's not that sexy. Okay. <laughs> it's actually much more complex mm -hmm. and convoluted. It's not as simple and easy. Well, God created Adam and Eve. They like boom. Like out of the out of nothing, out of the ground, he just made them. People, then you get your apologist says, well, he said he made them from the ground, which could imply the entire evolutionary process. You, you've heard this before, Brady, I'm sure. Yeah. And they, when they say he made them from the ground, some people get, they squeeze the etiology. <laughs> they use, they, they, they figure out how to make that work with evolution. They say it's all, however many millions of years it took to get to Adam is what he meant. And he made them from the dust of the ground. Hmm. Yeah. That's a whole I'm, other thing, but I'm making yeah, another this, logical, it's way easier. I'm making a lot of, another logical connection to actually the presuppositional argument because mm. uh, it's a it's a false dichotomy, right? Because it's it's like either God accounts for the laws of logic or not God accounts for the laws of logic, <laughs> right? And it's like how do you? <laughs> yeah, that's totally nonsensical. Like the, yeah. how what accounts for the laws of logic is probably really. We don't know, but it's really complex, and it's like why are there only two options. Right. It's like <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, like, yeah. Good stuff. I hope you guys are really um, able to appreciate some of the thoughts that we're we're working through here. Just as you deconstruct, I think some of these conversations that we're having are very helpful ways to look at why did I accept the simplicity of that. Why did I, I I'm mm. an adult human being. If somebody tried to tell me that cell phones work because there are little men inside these, these little boxes of ours running back and forth, you know, in another dimension, delivering messages <laughs> to each other. That's the way text. If somebody tried to tell me, I would not accept that. Why would I accept? Are you comparing that to, to the Bible? Well, I guess, <laughs> well, I'm just saying the simplistic explanations that we've accepted for what people groups matter and what should I be doing with my life? And, oh, Jesus did it, so I should do it too. And like, yeah, it's embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's let's uh, try to get out of this chapter here. Um, I will not interrupt. I promise you. <laughs> where are we, where are we at? Um, did verse we even 14. read the verses? We, we uh, read from ten. We, mm -hmm. we read, yeah, we read ten to thirteen. I think we dealt with it well mm -hmm. enough. I'm ready to go into fourteen. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. I myself am satisfied about you, my brethren, that you yourselves are full of goodness. Filled with all knowledge. If, you, if they're filled with all knowledge, why are you writing to them? Uh, filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another. But on some points, I've written to you very boldly by way of reminder. I'm just reminding you. That's why. Really? He's introduced so much new stuff here. But I'm just reminding you. This is almost Donald Trumpish. The way everybody knows this. Everybody knows you say everybody knows to make people feel like if they don't know, then something's wrong with them. I'm just reminding you here. Uh, okay, I guess you told us this before. Maybe, I, okay, sure. Um, because of the grace given me, this, there's so much cap here, y'all. I'm sorry, I should have read it first. I should have read it. Um, but on some points, I have written to you very boldly by way of reminder because of the grace given me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Um, in Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to be proud of my working work for God, for I, have, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has wrought through me to win obedience from the Gentiles by word and deed by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and as far around as uh, Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ, thus making it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has been named, 
lest I build on another man's foundation. But as it is written, they shall, they shall see who have never been told of him and they shall understand <laughs> who have never heard him. It, so, it sounds silly now when I look at it, but when I was a Christian, I was convinced this was really deep, you know, but now, you know, 10 years out or, or better, you look at it, you're like, who cares that it was written? Like, what's the, like, like, why is that even important? But, you know, clearly in their world, everything has to be justified by, we've talked about that before too, how everything has to be justified by a verse. Yeah. You know? I look at verse 15. Proof texting, I guess. The, verse 15, the way he's justifying why they should mm. pay attention to him um, because of the grace given me by God. Mm. He basically is basic, like he's flashing his badge here. Um, you ever see those movies where somebody's got a fake badge and they flash it real quick and the person's like, let me see that again. <laughs> like, oh, you saw it. No, it's fine. I'm, I'm FBI. Mm. You, you see my, my badge. Like they a Leslie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like, <laughs> yeah. because you're saying you've got grace given you by God, I now have to- You're kind of you. saying I'm the, that dude. Right. I'm the shit. Shut up and listen to me. <laughs> like, basically, you- But it's graciously me. saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's saying it, he's like, he's, he's saying I'm the shit, but he's saying it graciously. He's like- I'm the shit by God's grace. I'm the shit, but it's just kind of like, but like as a you're, Christian, you're still saying you're the shit. <laughs> as a Christian, you don't question. You just say, oh, I see his badge. You, It was written that God gave him grace to be this, to be the boy, to be, the, to be that guy. And you read this and you just give him all the credit that he's claiming by saying this. One of the, one of the hmm. most important things that happens to you when you deconvert is you learn the difference between Claims and facts. Claiming mm. something doesn't make it a fact. You can claim anything. This is a claim. This doesn't make it a fact. Mm -hmm. A truth claim is still not truth. It's a claim about what's true. Yeah, but but why do facts matter, Brady? Well, facts can you, matter. Can you ground your... Do you ground that somewhere uh, without without there being a God? At the, all right, I'm yeah, going to stop. I, I'm gonna about, myself. I was about to answer you until I realized you were pre-supping me. But, uh, <laughs> does anything else need to be said about these verses here? I'm, I'm, yeah, the, the, no, the, the, the last comment I'm going to make about this thing is that the, it's a little weird. How You know how they say that uh, uh, the way that certain psychopaths like kind of hook you in is they'll like mm. love bomb you, but then mm. they'll also like make it about themselves yeah and he's like kind of doing that here a mm. little bit <laughs> mm. you know mm. it's like it's like you guys are full of goodness and all knowledge able to instruct one another uh <laughs> but you know but i'm minister you know grace given to me you know, blah, blah, blah. yeah so i still need to teach you some things <laughs> yeah exactly. even though you don't need anybody to teach yeah, you anything right <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna teach you something. Sit down, little man. Sit down. Yeah. So, uh, like, sit down, little man. The God's man of grace and power is here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Verse twenty-two. We're almost out of here. This is the reason why I have so often been hindered from coming to you. By but now, hold on. Let me go back and see what he's saying. This is the reason. What is it? Oh, because his his aim is to preach the gospel where it hasn't been preached. Because Correct. he doesn't want to yeah. build on anybody else's foundation. So Correct. this is the reason why I've yeah. so often been hindered from coming to you. But now, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, basically I killed it. I was all over the place. Uh, I have no re no reason mm -hmm. to work in these, um, no room to work in these regions. And since I have longed for many years to come to you, I hope to see you in passing as I long to go to Spain and to be sped on my journey there by you once i've enjoyed your company for a little at present however i'm going to jerusalem with aid for the saints um i'll keep reading with aid for the yeah. saints um for uh macedonia and achaia have been pleased to make some contribution for the poor among the saints at jerusalem and they were pleased to do it um and indeed 
he was saying that twice there. They were pleased to do this and they were pleased to do it. It's something to pay attention to there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, they are in debt to them. For if the Gentiles, oh, now we get a little bit of motivation here. Uh, for if the Gentiles have <laughs> yo, come don't, you know, the- yo, Brady, Brady, I'm thinking of, you know, when they tell that uncle who always eats and, and leaves, like he grabs his plate and leaves the, the mm-hmm. gathering to, so he got to, he's got to go. So he's like, yeah, I know I always eat and leave. But I'm telling you, it's because I have to preach the God's word. It's never been preached. Even though I'm going to come through to get some of your money and bring it right. <laughs> bring it somewhere else. Just know the reason why I don't really rock with y'all all the time is because I got to preach the gospel in places, <laughs> other regions. Like, you're getting so transparent here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to tell you to give any money, but uh, these other guys kind of did it. And they kind of they kind of are killing it, you know, like just in case. And, <laughs> and if, if that wasn't enough to make the grift a little more grifty, for if the Gentiles, <laughs> if the Gentiles have come to share in the Jews' spiritual blessing, they ought also to be of service <laughs> to the Jews in material things. So it's like, yeah, are mm-hmm. you telling me that you set all this up to? So Put your you hands in my pocket. <laughs> Come on, Gentiles. Get your hands out of my so pocket. Think, think, about what, think, about, think about what we said a minute ago, right? Jesus says, what is a man profit to gain the whole world and lose the soul? I said, well, you mm-hmm. already answered your own question. You gained the world. Jaywood said, not only do you gain the world, mm-hmm. but you also stop trading in the world for this thing that's not even real, your soul. Well, what does Paul do? <laughs> Paul gives you these spiritual blessings, these not real things, and says to the Gentiles, <laughs> all right, Gentiles, if you've benefited in the Jews' spiritual, but these not real blessings, the adoption, yeah, and the justification, yeah. and the sanctification, and the purification, and the, the, the you benefited in all these not real things, so now let them benefit in your real things. Give them, give up the dumb. Yeah, it's always been a shame. Hmm. It's always been a sham, man. Like yeah. it's right here in front of your eyes, <laughs> black, black and white. Wow. You mean to tell me the whole scheme to spread the gospel to the Gentiles is basically a Ponzi scheme? <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're telling me? That I mean, you're just like, I... <laughs> could, well, here's the question. Could this letter have ended without getting to this point? Could Paul have just said peace? Yeah. Or did he have to? All right, I'm coming for the cash. Oh my god, I never saw this before. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah. That's that's why that's why that 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 three sixteen, which I was thinking of, which was was it what two Timothy three sixteen, where he's like all of scripture is God free mm. and profitable. Mm. This, well, I guess it could be more true, I guess, here, because this is definitely profitable if it's not God breathed. Because <laughs> when you look at it, you're like, hmm. You know, these like kind of throwaway verses at the end that most Christians don't even think about. It's like, hmm. hmm. Maybe this is why he's doing so much. He's he's oiling up, what did I say, the 409 oil? He's using so much but oil. Somebody could say, uh, somebody could say, but no, he's collecting these offerings. And he's taking them to the, he says, what is it in verse, uh, verse 27, they were pleased to do it. They're in, they're indebted to them because they gave, uh, uh, you know, all these people gave Macedonia and, and, uh, Achaia, all these people, they, they gave these, and I went and I distributed this, this contribution among the poor. Now, once again, like I just said, these are claims. We don't know that any mm-hmm. of this happened. If they ever really did <laughs> give and he ever did collect it. We don't know that he actually gave the collection out and contributed to the poor. <laughs> he could have it, it could be like the, it could be Ichabod's Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this nice, nice shameless plug for you guys to get over there to Ichabod's Patreon and, and support the, support the, you know, support the pod. Uh, I just, I felt like I should do that. This is a perfect place. No, but look, so yeah, channel, but right? look, so look, I'm telling people join the Patreon. Because I, I'm planning mm-hmm. this trip to St. Louis to go um, uh, interview uh, um, Jr. and you know the trip is expensive and all mm-hmm. this that, and the third. 
for all you all know, I could have already interviewed Jr. I could be just he could have come <laughs> he could have come to Philadelphia. I could have interviewed yeah. him, and it cost me no money at all. Uh -huh. Right? I could just mm -hmm. be saying that to get you all to give to pad my pockets. Now, as it so happens, we live in an age with cell phones, and I can film myself at the airport. I can film myself getting in the Uber, going to meet jail. I can film. I can show you receipts on what I'm doing with the money. You know, from. But here you have somebody saying, "Hey, they gave, and I distributed it among them." If you guys give, I'm going to mm -hmm. distribute among other people. You have no idea whether or not this is going to happen. So mm -hmm. for the person that says to me, Brady, why would they have lied? Then what was in it for them? What could they have gained? Well, I, I you see one motivation right here. I give you exhibit A. Mm -hmm. He's collecting. He's definitely passing the offering plate. Yeah. And. There are a lot of times that we can point to in recent history where that offering plate gets passed and, okay, one for God, two for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we've seen that so many times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where did I stop? Verse 27, so now verse 28. When, when therefore, I have completed this, and have delivered to them what has been raised. So I'm raising money. I'm going to deliver it to them. Uh, I shall go on by way of you to Spain. And I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of Christ. Verse 30. I appeal to you, brethren, by the Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf. So now I prayed a bunch of prayers that as far as we can tell, didn't really get answered. Now I want you to join me and pray and strive. <laughs> a bunch of prayers that aren't going to be answered right. too, right? <laughs> uh, 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 strive together with me and your prayers to God. Think about all the energy, emotional and physical and otherwise. Strive with me and your prayers to God on my behalf that I may be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea. Some little, little beef going on here. And that my... Right. My service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints so that by God's will, I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. Commentary, hmm. fellas. It almost feels like the ending of a letter, right? It yeah. does. It does. It makes you wonder if verse 16 or chapter 16 was tacked on by someone else. Yeah, it, it. I wonder what scholars are saying about because the way that ends, that feels like a nice little complete. Anyway, all right. That's all. That's a whole other thought trailing off there. But <laughs> well, we only we got yeah. one chapter left, and there's not much here. But Jay, Witt, you did have you did have a comment about chapter sixteen. Chapter sixteen is just him greeting everybody he can think of. I commend to you, mm -hmm. our sister Phoebe, a deaconess in the church. Um, that you may receive her in the Lord as befits the saints and help her in whatever she may require from you, for she has been a helper of many and of myself as well. And then from verses 3 down to verse 16, greet this one, greet this one, greet this one, greet this one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I give thanks for this one, I give thanks for this one, greet this one. And then verse 16, Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. Uh, anything you want to take from this or, or anything you think we, we can take from this in our deconstruction? No, I honestly believe, because I remember when I used to read through the Bible, I was usually pretty good until I got up to numbers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and those were the harder weeks of reading or days, I should say, when I was reading through numbers because you know you had to you were looking at it with this 2 timothy three sixteen lens of all the scriptures god breathed and is profitable uh, you know for teaching exhortation etc and you're just like i remember seeing people like reform ministers and stuff preaching through genealogies and trying to make it like an interesting because they they 
their brand was we we're doing expository preaching which means we got to go verse by verse through whatever book and when you get to these long stretches where if anybody's done a long trip on the road there's the long stretch where the road is pretty much the same like one for like for a couple of miles or just straight everything's the same so you're in you're in numbers or you're in genesis and you're going through a chapter that's just basically and such and such begat such and such begat such as and then that sunday sermon the guy has to read every verse and pretend <laughs> that all of scripture is god breathed and profitable that's just my point because they have to they have to act like that has the same yeah has enough meat there for your soul right mm -hmm. so it's like all right uh, and, and Onan begat such and such, who or Onan didn't begat because apparently he committed the sin of Onan and got struck down. But uh, Onan's brother begat X and Y Z, right? It, mm. And you got to sit there and be like, mm. and so the pastor is mining that, trying to find. See, this is why, because yeah. in Luke we find there's a genealogy for Christ, mm. and so this is why listen, and Gina, because our Bible is a historical book, and that person was the per you know. It, so they got to find all of these. You know, that's all I got to say about uh, the end of this chapter is that yes, these straightforward greetings and salutations that are just nothing but a person saying greet this person, greet this person. Maybe it was tagged on to um, I, for whatever reason. You got to sit there and try to like preach through that for a Sunday. I'm sure when mm -hmm. Piper or whoever else went through Romans, they probably spent maybe two Sundays on 16 going through greetings, you know, <laughs> and trying to find some kind of way to, to over spiritualize and get some kind of meat out of, out of what yeah. would probably be considered Bones. a very phony passage of scripture. Um, yeah. And so you look for any, you know, what I, I'll put this back up on the screen so that I, I could try to look through it to see. I would look at verses like verse six, um, and <laughs> Andricus and, and Junius, my kinsmen and fellow prisoners. I would try to pull something out of that. I would, uh, uh, they are <laughs> men of note among the apostles and, uh, uh, this person down here who, uh, Greek roof is eminent in the Lord. I would try to encourage people. Are you are you working in the Lord in such a way? Who is it down here? Uh, Persis, who has worked hard in the Lord, encourage people to live in such a way that their name. You want to be, be a Persis. You want to be a Persis. You want your name included in. You know, you, <laughs> you're going to try to find some kind of Yo, way. It will to give get some it mileage give, out of this Brady. passage. It yeah. will give. <laughs> yeah it's like ur urbanus it's, it's like okay we okay uh, we got our urban apology <laughs> greet urbanus yeah i gotta figure out an etiology for how to use <laughs> a, a chapter full of just meaningless dreams <laughs> yeah the, the, yeah the, man. The, the biggest thing that jumps out for me right now is just how dominantly gentile this church was hmm you know, I, I think yeah. he only mentions three uh, other uh, Jewish people, you know, mm. or maybe four. Yeah, maybe you got four. the spirit of discernment there, Albert. You're getting some real meat there. That's some meat. <laughs> I, it just it, 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 gives you a, it just gives you a picture of who his audience was, mm. actually, right? And, and why the focus on the Gentile stuff and the, the whole division was so important in, within this narrative. It's almost like, you know, it's just yeah just, he knew his audience yeah. <laughs> so, how's that mm -hmm. he just mm -hmm. knew his audience <laughs> mm. yep i wonder to what degree i don't know this this is very speculative but mm -hmm. you start naming all these people are these real people <laughs> you know what i mean like mm. Unlike the other letters, you have letters where he talked about the way he was when he was among them. Like, we, there's no real indication of, I guess, maybe, maybe you can go back to Acts and look at his journey and see how much time he spent in Rome. Um, we have no way of knowing whether or not these are real people. We have no way. All of this can be gaslighting to give us the impression that there was a a real community, that there was a real relationship, that there was a real 
genuine love between him and the community. And uh, we don't know. And, and this is this is the the danger of getting your worldview from history. The most you can do with history is learn what likely happened if a certain set of claims are true. If this is true, this mm-hmm. is the, then this likely happened. This is probable. Uh, that's un- improbable. There's data that would suggest that, oh, that's only one side of the story. You can't build a whole worldview off of it because you don't know you were not there. And and the most you can do is, is say, here's how the story goes. What lessons can we learn from that? Until you start bringing in artifacts and, uh, you know, testimony that that has corroboration that you re- you really can't take one source and build a, a historical chronicle off of one source that you could bank on and yet this is what we have here i i, I don't know I'm, j- I'm just struck by just the paucity of how like how sure we were in building a biblical worldview and going around the world or going around our world, telling people how certain these things were with no real ability yeah. to be able to substantiate any of this. So I don't know. I just, that's one thing as I, as I read through this, I, this list here. The only thing I would say is that we probably, it's too late now because we've, we've been in this, uh, these two chapters for a minute. Uh, but um, we skipped over probably the most hot button topic of this chapter 16 in the first couple verses when it re- when Phoebe is referred to as a deaconess, yes, which has led to not a few disputes within the Christian evangelical church, at least here in America, where yeah. some people get a lot of mileage out of the word for servant there in that passage, where they yeah. see it as an actual office. Mm-hmm. And she's actually sharing alongside the deacon, so so that the qualifications for deacon you can just make them apply to a woman in a similar way, and 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 understand that if you see that being able to be done with the passage about deacons, perhaps for elder the same thing is true. You see what I'm saying? So some people deduce from him calling Phoebe a. Uh, a uh, a deaconess or a servant, and if they see that as an office, and they see him refer to deacons in another passage, but it's all masculine pronouns, etc., then they can say, well, yeah, likewise, when they talk about elders in the same way, you can also make that feminine. Um, so well, that becomes a huge argument. Here's know? what it makes me think hearing you say that, because we just talked about the way mm-hmm. chapter 15 ended and how much it sounded mm-hmm. like a real ending. Like mm-hmm. somebody could probably argue that chapter 16 was added for the purpose of trying to get women, uh, women in leadership roles, because it is not mm-hmm. a natural, it's not a natural follow up to the way verse uh, chapter 15 ends. So yeah, now yeah. you come in, you come in here in chapter 16, and you do see not just Phoebe, but you see Priscilla. Uh, you may see more. And she's about- first, she's in front of of Aquila, which some people think it suggests that she was the person who was the leader in that situation. Have you heard this before, right, Brady? Uh, no, I haven't heard that. When about- the, the order, yeah, I've heard that the order of the names, there is a suggestion of the like, kind of prominence of Priscilla over, over Aquila, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'd be interested in how many of these, how many others of these names are feminine names. I see julia down in verse 15 but i don't know if that's a masculine or feminine name in that culture it'd be very interesting to me if if a uh see mary here in verse six mm-hmm. mary who mary who has worked among you uh very interesting if if quite a few of these names are feminine if a mm-hmm. case could be made that this chapter was added to bolster the idea of women serving in leaders in yeah. leadership roles who knows? But the only thing I think I can say off my head about that in really short is that I think most people, most of the critical scholars, they consider Romans to be an authentic Pauline work. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and they actually think that that it's pro women in leadership. I think I've heard this said. Uh, is is a Pauline position, and the other yeah, epistles that. that seemingly that. Yeah. are more exclusionary are, are, are reactions to Paul. Yeah, so I I just want to be sure to note that because I'm yeah. sure some people will hear us and and know that and be aware, and I, I'm aware of that too. Yeah. But it, like in keeping with Brady's and maybe my little observation, 15 does feel like it ends mm. almost, and this is an interesting addition. I mean, it might just be what it is, but it just, you know, it's just kind of interesting how prominent the women leadership is there and how much controversy just calling Phoebe a deaconess or maybe the word servant is, has just saying Phoebe, a servant of the church, it has led to so much like controversy. There was a lot of division in Christianity over that yeah. passage. What? I think there was a controversy at Redeemer um, about that, if I'm not mistaken, with Tim Keller mm-hmm. uh, over the deaconesses and like some women wanting and, you know, they were, whether they were going to take a hard line conservative approach to that and not allow women to be ordained as even a deaconess on the basis of these verses. Well, at any rate, that's shit that we no longer have to care about. So <laughs> Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and, and, to, and to be frank, all of Romans is shit that we no longer have to care about, but it's good <laughs> to have gone through it and deconstruct the way that we have. Uh, I hope that this has been. We should have some champagne. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, but I, I, I hope this has been, <laughs> been been good. It's been great for me to to help deconstruct the part of me that Romans was used to build up in my worldview. Um, mm-hmm. To know that I was right to walk away from this nonsense. And uh, yeah, uh, any last words, Al? No, it just uh, not, not. I mean, uh, the final toxicology. Maybe I'll uh, uh, just. Uh, I don't know. I can't top what you just said, Brady. Just we need kinda... we need a nurch we need a nurch doxology we need something to take us out of nurch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's funny. I think that was a Freudian slip. He said the toxology. And yeah, I no, think no, no, he was saying that. doxology. Yeah. Oh wow! That's, wow. Take, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. So, we, so we have to do toxologies. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Right. So, so here good. we go. Here, here's my attempt. Okay. Now, now to all of us who were able to strengthen ourselves according mm. to our own minds and hearts <laughs> we gotta you we gotta we gotta use the phrase keep from falling all of us all of ourselves were able to keep us from falling for bullshit like we gotta <laughs> some, something like that's gotta be gotta right. be in the doxology so yeah. we'll, we'll work on it we'll work on it well yeah we're now into on. us instead of him yeah it's yeah. gotta be now into us though right yeah now sure. into us who, no. who are able to keep ourselves from falling for the bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Be logic and life and light. And yeah. Yes, right. forever. Forevermore. Amen. Yes. Yeah. yeah for, indeed. For, for as long as for as long as life lasts. We don't get forever. We get this yes. life. We get this life. So yeah, yes. we'll, we'll come back. For the rest of our lives. Yes. Yeah. So all right, you guys, much love. We'll, we'll be out on that one. All right, peace.